So today we are sharing on Chaitanya Charit Amrita in the way we began already. We will find out the connection between Chaitanya Charit Amrita and Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali. The quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali done by Anandadas Babaji. Usually he wants to underline some Rasika point. And that's why Chaitanya Charamita is very good to underline that point with statements of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and others. So we will begun, begin in the introduction today. Last time we started because of the connection with another verse we were reading the day before. And last time we heard Radhikara Brema Guru Ami Shishyanat Sada Amanana Nitya Najaya Udbhat. This is a statement from Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adi Lila 4.124. Sri Radhika's love is the teacher, and I am the dancing pupil. Thus, she always makes me dance in different ways. And this statement is, of course, made from our Mohan. So today we will start in the beginning, in the introduction. And Ananda Das Babaji is quoting Chaitanya Charadamira quite a lot. You can see here all these different colored notes are quotes of Chaitanya Charadamita. So there's quite a lot. Yes, it's running like water. <laughs> so if someone, because you were invited to find out some quotes if you would like, and if you found something, then of course you can share this anytime. But if not so, then I will just start and go on till you will lovingly interrupt me with some sharings, some other quotes, some questions, or whatever. So Srila Ananda Das Babaji is making a very interesting point, I find, it's interesting for me because um, of my past uh, devotional way, because there I remembered some discussions about the path of Vaidhi and Raganuga, how do they differ and where to start and so on. So many points were always made about this. And Srila Anandadas Babaji is clearing, clarifying this uh, very nicely here. And he is also quoting for that one verse, no, two verses of, no, even three verses of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So let's see. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has proven to Vienkata Bhatta, see Chaitanya Charitamrita Matya Lila 9, that the goddess of fortune did perform many purifying austerities to attain the position of the gopis, but that she could not attain it because she did not have the sweet 
intimate attitude towards him. So that's a nice beginning on the state of Gopi Bhav that even the goddess of fortune cannot get this. So it's just a start. E laki sukha boga chati chiro kala vrata niyam kori tapa kori lo apa. Just to associate with Krishna, Lakshmi gave up all sense enjoyment for long and performed severe austerities following many regulative principles. Chaitanya Charamita Matya Lila 9, 113. Rasana Pailo Lakshmi Shastra Ihashuni. Lakshmi did not attain the Rasa dance. I have heard from the revealed scriptures, Chaitanya Charitamrita Matya Lila 9, 120. Vachendra Nandana Boli Tare Jane Vracha Jana Aishvarya Kyane Nahi Kon Sambanda Manana Vraja Lokera Bhave Ye Korea Bhajan Sejana Poya Vracha Vrachenda Nandana. The people of Braj know him as the son of Brachendra, and they consider that they can be that there can be no relationship with him in awe and reverence. Those who worship Krishna in the mood of the people of Braj will attain that. Vachendra Nandana in Braj. Chaitanya Charitamrita 9, 130 to 131. It is not a fact that Raganuga Bhakti comes after the stage of Sadhana Bhakti. Now it comes to the main point. It is not a fact that Raganuga Bhakti comes after the stage of Sadhana Bhakti, devotion in practice. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Matya Lila 22, 108 states, E sadhana bhakti duito prakara, e kavaidi bhakti raga nuga bhakti ara. There are two processes of practical devotion. One is regulative, so called compulsory vaidi devotion. The other is spontaneous, passionate. Raga devotion. Srila Rupa Goswami writes in Bhakti Ras Amrita Sindhu Vaidhi Raganuka Chiti Sattvita Sadhana Pitha. There are two kinds of Sadhana Bhakti devotion in practice, Vaidhi compulsory, and Raganuga spontaneous devotion. Both the Vidhi devotee and the Raga devotee may therefore begin simultaneously with the path of devotion from the stage of Anatta Nivritti, cessation of unwanted habits, progressing through the stages that have been described by Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The difference between them lies not in personal purity, but in their mood. So I wanted to quote this because 
I think it's a very interesting and actually a very uh, important, yes, important point. It's a very important point. So it's not, again, it's not the difference of personal purity. It's not that the Raga Bhakti must be much more pure to begin that. No, it's a difference in the mood. So this is in the introduction of Vilap Kusumanjali. And Srila Ananda Das Babaji is quoting here Chaitanya Charit Amita. Actually, it was five times here, five times to make this very clear, to underline this actually. And of course, there was also one quote uh, of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which I didn't want to hide. But we can see five quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita to make this very clear. So we can see that in Chaitanya Charitamrita, everything is included, actually. We just have to search for it, look for it. And you are all invited to search more, because I have only two eyes. They are very limited. I tried to find everything, but there are also silent quotes where there's not written CC directly. So if you are inspired, you can always come here and share that. So the next quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita in the introduction. No, it's in the verse number one already. Srila Raghunadas Goswami was suffering because he felt deprived of the devotional service of his beloved deity, Srimati Radharani. And on the top of that, his heart was wounded by the fire of separation from Srila Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. Krishna Bhakta Viraha Vina Dukkha Nahi Ara Chaitanya Charit Amrita There is no other misery in the world than separation from the devotees of Krishna. In the eighth verse, ah, okay, this is another quote from another scripture. So again, Anandadas Babaji is quoting Chaitanya Charit Amrita to underline that fact that Srila Raghunadas Goswami is suffering because of separation from Radharani. So if you have any questions or comments, please just interrupt. Otherwise I will just go on searching for the nectar in Vilap Kuzumanjali. So the next quote here from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Ananda Das Babaji is making, is in verse number two, yes. Seeing the anxiety of our hero, Rupa and Tulasi, leave him standing there and go to the Kunja, where Swamini is laughing and choking with her girlfriends about her victory and Krishna's 
defeat. In this way, Tulasi offers Sarasavandana witty praises to her Ishtadeva, favorite deity, standing before her Swamini. This is also called Mangala Charan or an auspicious invocation. As if, uh, as is customary in Vaishnava tradition, the opening verse of a devotional book is a prayer to the Guru, the spiritual master, and the second verse is a prayer to the Ishtadev, the favorite deity. So this is the point, and Srila Anandadas Babaji is underlining that again with a quote of Chaitanya Charit Amata. Rantera Parambha Kori Mangala Charan Guru Vaishnava Bhagavan Tinera Smaran Tinera Smarane Hoi Vikna Vinashana Anaya Sehoi Nicha Vanchita Purana Chaitanya Chavit Amrita. In the beginning of this book, I make a Mangala Charan in which I remember a spiritual master the Vaishnavas and the Lord. Remembrance of this tree will destroy all obstacles to spiritual life and will easily fulfill all sacred desires. So this was Verse number two and verse number three, there's another statement, another quote. So Srila Ananda Das Babaji loves to quote Chaitanya Charitamrita. It looks like that. Here is a statement that for Shyam Sundara's happiness, Braneshwari thinks of a new pastime. She wants to make Shyam Sundara happy. Krishnake alade tate nama ladini. Se shakti tvare shukka aswade apani. The potency which makes Krishna happy is named Ladini. Through his energy, he, Krishna himself, relishes happiness. Chaitanya Charit Amrita, Matya Lila 8, verse 157. Srimati Rata serves all the innumerable forms of God which shring Gara Ras through her own particles and expansions Angsakala that appear are so many divine concerts. Tara Machi Brachenana Bhava Rasa Beda Krishnake Kuraya Rasa Dika Lila Svade Govinda Nandini Radha Govinda Mohini Govinda Sarvasva Sarva Kanta Shiromani Amongst all these kinds of concerts, there are different moods and flavors in Braj that make Krishna relish the flavor of pastimes such as the Rasa dance. Radha delights Govinda, Radha enchants Govinda, and Radha is everything to Govinda. 
Hence, she is the ground jewel of all the concerts of the Lord. So another wonderful statement. So we can see that Chaitanya Charit Amrita is underlining the rasa points perfectly. And so Srila Anandadas Babaji is using these quotes again and again and also here in the same verse, number three. Another point, this sash of bells is called pranayi here, or beloved, because it maddens our hero, Krishna, with its sweet jingling when Swamini walks, dances, or plays intimate sports with him. Such a beloved ornament is not so easily forgotten, but today, in the climax of the amorous sports, Swamini nevertheless forgot them. The greatness of these loving pastimes is that Radha and Krishna are very eager to make each other happy. So this was the point, the beginning point. And now there's the statement, the quote. Briti Vishayanande Tat Ashrayananda Taha Nahi Nicha Shukha Vanchara Sambanda Nirupati prema yaha taha eriti priti vishaya shukhe ashrayara priti. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adi Lila 4, 199-200. The happiness of the abode of love is the happiness of the object of that love. This is not a relationship of desire for personal happiness. It is one of causeless love. The reservoir of love becomes happy when the object of love is happy. This causeless love is the natural cause of these pastimes being so glorious. After hearing the truth about Rata Krishna from Ramananda Roy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Prabhu Kohe, Janilo Krishna Rata Prema Tattva, Shunite Chaye, Don Haravilas. Mahatva, the Lord said, Now I know about Krishna's and Radha's divine love. I like to hear about the glories of their pastimes now. Roy Kohe, Krishna Hoy Diralalita, Nirantara Kamakrita, Yahara Charita. Ratri Dina Kunche Krita Kore Rata Sange Kaishora Vayas Sapala Koilo Krita Range Sri Ramananda Roy replied Krishna is called Dira Lalita, one who is clever, of fresh, youthful beauty expert in joking, free from worries, and who is controlled by the love of his dearest gopis. He always engages 
in erotic pastimes. That is his nature. Day and night, he plays with Rata in the groves of Braj. And in this way, he makes his adolescence successful. Chaitanya Charitamrita Matya Lila 8, 187 and 189. How wonderful are the glories of these pastimes. Who can describe the greatness of that power that awakens an irrepressible, no, irrepressible greed for tasting such perfectly delectable sports with his dear gopis in the kunjas, in the supreme Brahman, the embodiment of full transcendental bliss, God himself, day and night. Urged by their insatiable divine desires, Radha and Krishna float in innumerable directions on the stream of their transcendental pastimes. They greatly desire to make each other happy, completely forgetting their personal interests. So it is not so astonishing that in this consciousness, Sri Radhika forgot her sash of belts, however dear it may be to her. So this was another example how Srila Anandadas Babaji is underlining the points. They are all so sweet, what to say. But if you want to share something on this, please. Otherwise, I will just go on and share this nectar with you. as good as I can. So, another verse, another quote. Verse number four. You can see there were a lot of quotes here in verse number three. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven verses. That's quite a lot. So, Vilap Kusumanjali, verse number four, there's another statement in the notes of Srila Anandadas Babaji. Yadyapi Amara Guru Chetanyera Das Tatapi Janiya Tanrita Hari Prakash. It's about the Guru principle, Guru Tattva. Although my Guru is a servant of Lord Chaitanya, I still know that he is a direct manifestation of him. Chaitanya Chait Amita Adi Lila 4, verse number 45. Shakshattarit Venasha Mashta Shastrai Uktastata Bhavyata Eva Sadbi. 
Kindu Prabhu ya Priya eva tasya Vande Guroshi Charanaravindam. I praise the lotus feet of my Guru, who according to all the scriptures and the great saints, is Lord Hari himself, but who is still dear to the Lord, being his pure devotee. This Verse was Guvashtakam Srila Vishwana Chakravati Pad in the connection with Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So Srila Anandadas Babaji is again underlining here. Considering him to be non different from God does not mean that one should offer things to him that are not first offered to the Lord. Nor should one consider the Guru to be just another devotee, but one should see him as the mercy incarnation of the Lord, and in that respect, non-different. Very clear statement. Verse number five of Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali. There are <laughs> another quotes <laughs> practically the whole notes. <laughs> Three pages. So we can see how important Chaitanya Chair Amita is here for Srila Ananda Das Babaji to underline the statements which are made here and to make it very clear that this. Raganuga scriptures are fully, completely in the line of the so simple, uh, how, you, how you say, sims, the parampara, another word, the simple succession. So, no, no discussion needed, actually. Srila Ananda Das Babaji is perfectly underlining everything with statements of Chaitanya Charit Amrita that there is no more question. So, the verse number five is, I worship the moon like Lord Chaitanya, who with the ropes of his mercy suddenly pulled me out of the deep, waterless well of household life, which is so difficult to come out of and is full of limitless suffering. He gave me shelter at the tips of his feet, that defeat the beauty of lotus flowers and entrusted me into the care of Sri Swarup Damodha. Notes in his external absorption, Srila Raghunathas now praises most merciful Sri Man Mahaprabhu by whose grace he became disgusted with all the royal opulence that is desired by worldly people. 
When one tastes the transcendental mellows of pure devotional uh, of pure devotion, one considers even liberation or the bliss of Brahman to be insignificant. What to speak of royal opulence? Mahaprabhura Bhakta Ganera Vairakya Pradhana Yahadeki Prita Hoy Gora Bhagavan Chaitanya Charit Amrita Renunciation is very important for the devotees of Mahaprabhu. When Lord Gora sees his devotees dispassion, he is very pleased. After instructing Sanatan Goswami on the truth about devotion, Lord Chaitanya sent him to Vrindavan, saying, Kanta Karangiya Mora Kangala Bhaktagana Vrindavane Aile Tara Kuriho Palana. My devotees are very poor having only thorn gilts and small water pots. When you come to Brindavan, you should protect and maintain them. And in the Chaitanya Chandradaya Natakam it is said that after taking sannyas, the Lord personally told Sri Advaita Acharya, without renounce, renouncing everything, one cannot properly worship Krishna. This is certainly not the Lord's own concoction because it is also described in Srimad Bhagavat, which is considered to be the essence of the Vedanta. So here we can see now Srimad Bhagavatam is quoted to underline the quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amita. There can be no question anymore. Underlined and underlined and underlined. So Ananda Das Babaji is doing such a wonderful job. No questions anymore. Before offering his flower-like lamentations to Srimati Radharani's lotus feet, Sri Raghunath's body and mind are illuminated by the effulgence of Sriman Mahaprabhu's compassion. And he braces the lotus feet of this most merciful Lord by saying that he is Brakritita Santra Dayam Buddhi, naturally a deep ocean of mercy. In the mood of our Swamini, how it could be not like that? Remembering the Lord's mercy through which he began to feel the burning suffering of household life, considering his opulences that were like those of the heavenly king Indra and his wife, who was as beautiful as an angel, to be like the biting poison of a snake or a scorpion, and his household life, household life to be a blind, waterless well. Raghunath's mind is started. So we can hear a very important point by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Everything happened by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not by his endeavor. Srila Raguna Das Goswami is not saying my endeavor. No, he's saying by the mercy of the Lord. By the mercy of the Lord, he considers all his opulences to be 
nothing. By the mercy, not by his endeavors. Through the loving punishment of Nitai Chand, who is non-different from Mahaprabhu and whose body melts with feelings of compassion, he got the signal from Mahaprabhu that it was time for him to renounce household life. And he became the object of the mercy of Mahaprabhu's devotees. We remember in this connection that he tried to go with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu before, but he couldn't because he didn't have the mercy of Nitai Chand at this time. Then he got the mercy of Nitai and after that he could go, he could leave home. This is a very important point. Gurudev always underlines that point. First Nitai, then Goranga. By the mercy of Nitai, we get the mercy of Mahaprabhu. Finally, Mahaprabhu appeared in the form of his Guru, Yadunandan Acharya. Finally, Mahaprabhu appeared in the form of his Guru, Yadunanda Acharya, and helped him to escape from household life by making him fetch the house priest at the end of the night. In this way, the Lord pulled, pulled Raghunath out of the miserable blind well of household life with the ropes of his mercy. Being pulled by the ropes of the Lord's mercy, Raghunath managed to reach the lotus feet of the Lord at Purushottama Puri within 12 days without sleeping or eating. There Raghunath's burning heart was soothed by the shade of Mahaprabhu's feet that defeat the beauty of lotus flowers. So we see Shilananda Das Babaji is completely on the point. Why he is taking this Chaitanya Jared Amrita statement so often? Because this is the mood of Radharani. And this shows that actually only by mercy, only our qualification is the mercy of our Swamini. I have no qualification, not the least. The only qualification I can have is that I pray to get the mercy and stick to the lotus feet. And then we will get the mercy. And here it is proved. Anandadas Babaji is underlining it so many times. And another statement, Chaitanya Charit Amita Anja Lila Chapter 6. The Lord was sitting together with Swarup Damoda and others when Raghunath came up to meet him. Staying in a distance in the courtyard, Raghunath offered his obeisances and Mukunda Dada said, Oh, here, Raghunath has come, the Lord said. Come here. And Raghunath clasped his lotus feet. But the Lord told him to get up and mercifully embraced him. Raghunath then bowed down to the feet of Swarupdamuda and others. All the devotees then embraced him. 
seeing how much mercy he had gotten from the Lord. The Lord said, Krishna's mercy is stronger than anything, for he has released you from sensual life, which is like a ditch into which people pass stool. Raghunath, though to himself, I do not know who Krishna is. I only know that I was redeemed by your mercy. I don't know who Krishna is. The only thing I know, I was redeemed by your mercy. Radharani's mood. So we can see the whole statement. These red lines on the side is always Chaitanya Charit Amita quotes. So the whole notes of this verse are quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So the Lord was very satisfied and said that Raghunath did well to adopt such a renounced life and a renunciant should always chant the holy name and keep himself alive simply by begging some food. If a renunciant becomes dependent on others, on material circumstances, his own arrangements or anyone else but the Lord himself, he will not attain perfection and Krishna will not help him. Radhe Radhe Gauravani. Yes, Radhe Radhe. Thank you for reading and opening our eyes and hearts. I just had, while I was lying here on my couch, a little sleepy, I must admit, and the drops of your voice just filled my ears. I had one uh, very nice uh, realization because Gurudev always says, after I read this Vilap Kushmanjali, I can read Chaitanya Chaitamrita. I have more greed to read Chaitanya Chaitamrita. I remember that. Gurudev said that often. So I thought, now while you are reading it with this like research mood, that actually all the quotes of, of Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj, they are, you know, the gist of all the, how do you say, proofs or, or nectar that is supplied the, uh, by Chaitanya Chaitamrita. So that is why it happens, right? Because uh, these, these commentaries, they are filled with the realizations of 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 uh, of course, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and also Raguna Das Goswami because they were listening together in Radha Kund. They were sitting there together. So actually, what I feel now is that the commentaries of uh, uh, Chaitanya Chaitamrita they are kind of like the how do you say the drops of mercy that also uh, belong together with Vilap Kushmanjali. One cannot actually separate them. That's how I, I feel when I hear this, and it's so beautiful that you are doing it. Thank you. <laughs> he could only compose Vilap Kusumanjali by the mercy. 
The mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the base. So Chaitanya Charit Amrita is the base of actually this vilap. Without that, it wouldn't happen. So by the mercy of our Radharani in the embodiment of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, actually all this happens. And of course the taste to Chaitanya Charit Amrita is coming through our Swamini. Without her mood, Chaitanya Charit Amrita wouldn't be like that. Without our Karuna Mai, there wouldn't be that path for us actually. So we are so lucky. And Srila Anandadas Babaji is describing actually Srila Raghunath's beginning here. First he got the mercy of Nitai, then he renounced. He was not renouncing because he actually was told so by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He just did it. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw and heard from that, and he was very pleased. So it came from inside. Again, it was mercy. Because sometimes we think, oh yes, now I really have to renounce. But actually the real renunciation is that our passion is going to Radharani's lotus feet and not into material things. So if Rati is coming up, then we will be renounced for this material life. So it's not a question of doing it ourselves. And honestly, I wouldn't be able for that, really. So I'm really happy that I have the, the mercy of Gurudev and hopefully he will not forget me and give me mercy again and again and in this way we will get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then renunciation, why it is actually so uh, such a, a big topic here. If we want to serve without any self-interest, how we can have in our daily life our interests for ourselves always on the screen. Are we interested in serving or are we interested in enjoying? If we are not interested in enjoying but in serving, then the interest in enjoying will diminish automatically. By more and more serving, the rest will fall from the table. I always have this picture, there is a big table and every day one katong, one nice uh, box. Huh? box, box, one nice box is delivered. <laughs> delivering service, mercy delivering service. Every day a big box is coming and you put it on the table in front. And in this way, the rest is moved a little bit in distance, step by step. And then the things who are not so interesting will fall over by the time. So this is the way how actually we will get this mercy. At least this is my picture because I feel like that. I'm doing nothing. I'm not a renounced person. I have no qualification. I'm just a stupid fellow. But I feel that the mercy is coming every day. Some box is coming. New box. Deliverance. I don't know. I feel like this. Sunita, you also? <laughs> uh, Sunita? Yes. yes, it is like this. I feel that um, one, one time I read uh, the verses of Chaitanya Chaitamrita and 
you know, our mind is often like searching for some reasons or searching for some results. But actually, the only reason or result I found uh, why they got the mercy also, if you want to, you know, analyze how to get mercy, it's because they, Jaitanya Mahaprabhu, like them. I mean, of course, they are his eternal uh, associates, his eternal, her eternal mandris. But uh, you find it that he took a liking in Rupa Goswami. He took a liking in Raghunadas Goswami. So my hope is also that my Gurudev and the Vaishnavas, they take a liking in me that I can advance. And then, like you say, I will get some boxes of mercy and then the other boxes will fall down. And then only some, the love is remaining and only the taste is increasing. And naturally, it will happen naturally because often I, uh, the devotees are asking also how this happens. and. I told the story about Gurudev, but I find so funny he, because sometimes people stress too much this renunciation, especially in the Sanyas Ashram. But uh, I remember that story when, son when Sanyasi came to visit Gurudev and he was somehow speaking about some renunciation. And Gurudev, he ordered, he asked some devotees to bring Rasa Gulas and he was lying on his you know, on his asan or bed. And after one after another, he was eating this rasa gulas in front of the sannyasi. <laughs> and then the sannyasis couldn't tolerate anymore and left. But Gurudev says, yeah, the rati, the uh, attachment is more important than the renunciation. He doesn't believe in renunciation, but to develop attachment. So if, if the Vaishnavas, if Gurudev will develop a liking for you know our endeavors only for the the way we try to come closer the way we try to do our imperfect services and this and that already that i feel is so great that we have a hope like you said to, that the mercy will come and then we will be more able to to make happy that is the secret i also feel we just pray for the mercy that uh, the Vaishnavas and Gurudev will like us somehow and like our our little small things that we try to do and foolishly often. But this love and this liking, that will create the attachment. That is also my hope, Guravan. Yes, and this is written here also when we hear the story of Srila Raghunath. Because by getting mercy again and again and more and more. He has written, uh, Srila Raghunath's renunciation gradually attained its utmost limits. So by the mercy, by receiving the boxes again and again, the rest will fall off. So we just have to make our hands like this. Yes, we are prepared to get the mercy. It's hard enough. Honestly, I feel also like that. It's hard enough to accept the mercy. You may think, huh? what is talking about? Hard enough? Yes, actually it's hard enough because we are not used to accept mercy. We are used to think ourselves, to make our plans, to work ourselves on it and to do something ourselves. We are so used to it. It's not so easy to just accept all these mercy packages. At least for me, I don't know. In your case, maybe different, but for me, it's not so easy to accept again and again these mercy packages. Another, another box of mercy, another box of mercy, and another box of mercy coming again and again. Because I'm attached to the old boxes. 
They were standing there so long. <laughs> so we have to be open for change, actually, and this is hard enough, at least for me. But Srila Raghunath is the perfect example, and that's why his story is given here by Srila Anandadas Babaji, and of course it's his book, it's Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali, of course his story has to be here. So in this way, all the notes of this verse number five are actually the story of Srila Raghunadas. And so he gets the mercy. By the mercy of the Lord, Raghunadas became so detached from his body that he was able to remain absorbed in his bhajan 22 and a half hours a day and spend the remaining hour and a half sleeping. Oh, I'm sorry, I cannot imagine that. <laughs> This you can only do if you get the mercy by the Lord, otherwise how it's possible. On some days he would not even sleep that much, and even if he slept, he dreamed of Radha and Krishna. He followed Mahaprabhu's orders to the letter, and thus gave a wonderful example of bhajan to the whole world. For this reason, all the devotee aspirants still remember him with the utmost faith and devotion. Srila Swarup Damoda was so close to Sriman Mahaprabhu that he was considered to be like the Lord's second form. And it was under him that Srila Das Goswami performed Antaranga Seva or intimate internal service to the Lord. Srila Das Goswami was the only one of the six Goswamis who had personally witnessed the Lord's astonishing final pastimes at Puri, and without him the world could not have known about them. As he related... Ravani, I have a question. Yes. About this other sentence before that, it says uh, that Raghunadas Goswami could do Antaranga Seva to Swarup Damoda. He was not serving Mahaprabhu directly because the direct servant was Swarup Damoda, right? So in that case, would you feel that the Antaranga Seva is the personal service? No, no, it was Antaranga yes, Seva uh -huh. to, to the Lord. It's written here. Can you repeat this? I didn't catch it. Under the guidance of Swarup Damoda, he... Ah. So he was performing Antaranga Seva or intimate internal service to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I think we know what it is because so many examples are there in Vilap Kusumanjali of that. Yes, thank you. Thank you for these questions. This is giving life 
here. Thank you very much, Suniti, for sharing. Sharing with us. So now we are finished with verse number five. It was just a uh, short bringing together these points. And uh, we have now verse number six. And again, <laughs> again, Ananda Das Babaji is quoting Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Together with Manashiksha also to make points very clear. And what point he wants to make clear? May I love mostly my spiritual master, the holy name of Krishna, the lotus feet of the son of Mother Sachi, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Swarup Damoda, Sri Rupa Goswami, and his disciples, his older brother Sanatan Goswami, Govardhan Hill, Sri Radhakund, Brindavan, Braj, the devotees and the residents of Braj. Sri Raghunadas actually came to Braj after the disappearance of Sriman Mahaprabhu and Swarup Damoda to commit suicide by jumping from the Govardhan hill. But Sanatan Goswami, who is suffering when others are unhappy and who is an ocean of mercy, saved his life. Sri Sanatan Goswami said, Raghunath, the mercy of Guru and Goranga is everything to us. I also wanted to commit suicide once by throwing myself before the wheels of Lord Jagannath's chariot. But Lord Chaitanya, who is the inner overseer, knew what was on my mind and he forbade me to do it, saying, and this is now the quote, Chaitanya Charit Amita, Anjalila chapter 4, Sanatan, if I could attain Krishna by committing suicide, I would give up millions of bodies in a flash. But you cannot get Krishna simply by committing suicide. You can only attain him by doing bhajan. Other than devotion, there is no way to attain Krishna. Suicide is a dark, passionate activity through which you can never attain the transcendental Krishna. Therefore, O Raghunath, for the sake of Sri Goranga's love, remain patient, take shelter of the bank of Radhakund, and do bhajan there. On Sanatan Goswami's order, Sri Raghunath gave up the plan to commit suicide and became absorbed in the rasa of his bhajan on the banks of Radhakund. So we can see also very practical <laughs> advices here. I personally know also other devotees who were thinking about this. It's not so rare that people want to do suicide and think that after that life, then 
then they will go back. But after, without cleaning the heart, how we can actually come into the seva of our beloved Swamini? The prema is there in the heart, yes, but the trash also, and this we will take with us. So first clean the trash and then go in the seva. And another statement in the same verse, number six, Shikshashtakam seven. Oh, Govinda. Govani, Govani, yeah. one thing I want to add here. Yes, because, please. Uh, it may be interesting to know that uh, Gurdiv also said that when uh, Raguna Das Goswami was going in the association of, of, of uh, Sanatana and Rupa Goswamis, he was, then he, he started, uh, so to say, his deeper bhajan. And that's why I think it is said the rasa of his bhajan. Is that right? The rasa of his bhajan? And he started the, uh, the rasa of his bhajan also. I think there was one sentence. In the and rasa I, of his bhajan, on the banks yes. of the Radakon. Absorbed yes. in the rasa of his bhajan, on the banks of Radakon. Yes. So the, the rasa of his bhajan, it has a complete different meaning also than the, any kind of bhajan. Gurudev was once mentioning it from the perspective of observation or research that why would someone do, you know, try to commit suicide uh, when he was already in, in a higher bhajan. And then Gurudev said, because when he started to do the rasa of his bhajan in Radhakund, he had his deepest uh, realization of his svadu. And before he said also in Govardhan, uh, he is, uh, there's many rasas in Govardhan, there's many feelings and, you know, there's different, different uh, possibilities of, of relationships. And at that time, his bhajan was not uh, one-pointed, he said. And, and, and in Radhakund, in Radhakund, it became really deep. And that's why I, I feel also confirmation that uh, it's said the rasa of his bhajan that very i remember good point very interesting and a very important point yes so and uh, before he didn't have this rasa yes that's why he wanted to make suicide and also uh, to remember in that co uh, connection uh, th uh, that Sanatan Goswami himself was a candidate of suicide when he was in his younger age because his body was full of infections. He was suffering so much. He wanted to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he felt that his body was so impure that he wanted to, he was thinking to throw himself, his body, in front of. Uh, the big cart uh, wheels of Lord Jagannath. That is also in the earlier part of Chaitanya Chaitamrita. And then Mahaprabhu knew this, of course, because he knows the heart of his servants. And so he, he was embracing, first of all, he was embracing Sanatanga Swami, who felt so impure because it must have been really bad that his body was full of infections and painful and up to the point of even smelling badly. So Mahaprabhu embraced him. And of course, he got completely healed by this embrace. And Mahaprabhu said also to Sanatana Goswami, if I could 
attain Krishna by committing suicide, I would do it a hundred days, a hundred times daily or something like that. I would have done it a lot of times already. But that is the lesson also that by just giving up the body, it's not meaning that we can attain Krishna Prem. So Sanatana Goswami was also realized in that. So he was also helping Raghunath Das Goswami to overcome his feeling of separations or whatever feelings he had of imperfections or unhappiness. So he helped him to go into the rasa of his bhajan. And this is the point, if we do not have our rasa, if we do not have our goal clearly established, then we feel lost. Even if we may do some bhajan and we may chant, we may do so many things, but still we feel lost. We don't feel at home. So, we need to come to that rasa and we need to come to the form, to the soul form. And through these processes also Sanatana Goswami and Srila Raghunadas Goswami went. And this is showing us how practical actually these ways are for us. It's not, not just an ideal way, no, they also had their experiences which are connected with us. So now we come to Shikshashtakam. O Govinda, out of separation from you, the whole world appears as void to me. Remembering the love and compassion of Sanatan Goswami, Raghunada says, I take shelter of my master Sanatan Goswami, who was an ocean of compassion and who always felt sorry for the suffering of others. And now there comes a very interesting point. Although I was unwilling and blinded by ignorance, he delightedly made me drink the nectar of devotion laced with renunciation. Although I was unwilling and blinded by ignorance. Actually, this is what I can also feel. I am also unwilling and also completely blinded. But I am dragged by the mercy of Gurudev, by the mercy of the association of all of you. I'm, like you say, yeah, pulled. <laughs> so this is the the mercy path, actually. So, I think we are right in time. Maybe we can end here. And uh, we can go on. You see, there are quite a lot of quotes still. This is all quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. And this is just the first half of Vilap Kusamanjali. Second half is lying on the left side. So it's full of quotes. And I am so uh, interested in these connections because actually they give us more deep 
feelings. At least I can see that in my heart. It gives a lot of feelings. Because this is the mercy of Swamini from two sides. They are coming together here. Vilap Kusumanjali and Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Mercy from all sides, from above, from left, from right, from everywhere it's coming. So thank you very much, Sunidi Didi. My spiritual sister was giving me so much support here. Thank you for that. Sade, what's going on? Why you stop? Uh, is it not three o'clock? You stop early? Oh, last time it was like that, one and a half hour, and we stopped. So I thought... It's natural, huh? I so don't can know. we sing, Gauravani, can we sing one birthday song? One birthday song? To whom? To Gopinath. <laughs> ah, Gopinath has mercy today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. A happy birthday. A happy birthday. Hey, Gopinath, happy birthday to you. A happy birthday. A happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. A happy birthday, Gopinath. A happy birthday, Gopinath. A happy birthday, Gopinath. Happy birthday to you. A happy birthday, a happy birthday, happy birthday, and the dust of Radha's lotus feet to you. Gopinath Baya, happy, happy birthday, Radhe Radhe. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for your existence that you are with us and giving us so much mercy. You're our connection. Sometimes we are not, uh, I'm talking for me, I'm not so connected with Gurudev, but you connect me then indirectly. Like. So much in my life, Gauravani, you don't know. Uh, you I, don't know. Our meeting with all in the forest, in the camping, <laughs> forever indebted to you. Your mother too. Very blessed to have you as a brother. So need to did it also, all, all the rules. You are giving us the quintessence from Gurudev. <laughs> 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 oh, and I and what is the Prashad feast today, Gopinath? So it started with uh, Lassi in the morning. Happy birthday. Uh, Happy birthday. And then we had ice cream. Wow. Wow. Uh, making some lasagna for everyone. Oh, lasagna. Oh. <laughs> What do we do here? We should jump now to you. Come, yes, please come. Hast du gesagt, wir auch gestern? Yes, I also want to say we had also a special guest today. Rinda Didi came directly from Rindavan and she also cooked a nice, she, she wanted to cook and she's sending also her all her uh, dandavats to you, Gurudev, and also loving embrace and love to you, Gopinath, on your birthday. Okay. To all of you. Did you so, did you also have the, the 24 hour kirtan? It started at 6 wow. o'clock. 
small. Thank you. Yes, I didn't hear anything else. So it's only, I think, 24 hours for now. So she didn't answer yeah. anything. Okay. Thank you so much. Sadly, well, I'm sorry, I have to say. Mangala and Rajeshwari and Vilas. And very nice picture for Pray Prashad this morning. So sweet. Thank you. Hey. Happy birthday. Happy, yeah. We are so happy. happy you have birthday. It's not my birthday. It's just uh, people say it's today, but real birthday, we know the real birthday. And that is. <laughs> so now you are 11? The service of <laughs> the birthday. So I'm still waiting for my birthday to come. <laughs> it's me I can have a real birthday one day. Forever eleven, more happy than in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> So a, a happy birthday to you, the whole day. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank See you, you Dora, you're very nice. Thank you for doing this service and sharing with us. It was very sweet. And now, it gets, also... it, now it gets more and more interesting because we just started, but yeah. it it will be getting more and more interesting. The statements, they get deeper and deeper. So it will be really amazing. This is the mercy of Gurudev. He always said, he was telling me to do this actually. Wonderful. We also had in the morning some beautiful topics with Frinda Didi. We could share. She was just coming from Vrindavan and we could share the topics of the last two weeks, what we also share in our uh, yes. Zooms and it was really, yes, so nice to share it also with others. No? We are so lucky that we have every day, uh, you know, for now many years, we have actually a very strong injections of Rasakata by the blessings and with the support and all love of Gurudev. So we are very happy. Thank you all to make it possible. And yeah, let us be always eternally part of this. Rasa Bhajan. <laughs> Yes, and you are all invited. Please, if you find some statements which you, which inspire you very much, then please let us share this together here. You are all invited. If you find something, some statements of Chaitanya Charitamrita. You go hmm? verse by verse. Now we are going through the whole Virapkash Mandri. Yes, but you can also find it in Radha Rasa, Sudanidi, or in other books. So if something inspires you very much, then we can have a look on it. If you like, it's just an invitation to make it more choosy. Because sometimes I think I'm just reading, you know, it's just one person is talking. It's not, maybe not so tasty. But when Suniti Didi is coming and sharing and others also, then it gets more tasty. So you are all invited, if you like. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Radhe Radhe.